Mike's sick. Mike's sick. I was I was sick a couple of weeks ago, weeks ago, and then it's gonna be your turn to be. Last sick. Last week the podcast was sick. <laughs> the, first, the first half disappeared into the internet. Welcome back to the Flat of Fever Formula One podcast. This is gonna be uh, uh, kind of one of those uh, kind of short episodes, episode number forty eight, uh, um, and uh, not live either. Not live either. We did a bit later though because we just watched Ted's Notebook on TV. Oh yeah, just to, to, to keep up on the second day of testing stuff. The paddock uncut. Thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, but, but let's let's jump right to this because this is what people are wondering about. Uh, nobody this... even cares about testing today. Yeah. <laughs> All the team bosses were in Geneva for well, this business, right? Well, yeah. They were. In... Notice they didn't that do they this meant... in Barcelona. No, they, not in Barcelona yeah. and not not in Paris. Or the FIA yeah, they, yeah. uh, they went to Geneva again, neutral territory. <laughs> All right, Bernie. But this is this is part of like what Bernie has been like. So yeah. we read that article how Bernie was basically trying to to say that the the show needs spicing up, and was, he wouldn't take his family out to see Formula One. Right. <laughs> and, and he also threatened uh, Jean <laughs> a little oh, yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> and as a result of that, pretty much we can pretty much say that. This has come out. This this new qualifying format that could be could come in effect this year in time yeah. for Melbourne. Yeah. And I guess you can you if you're gonna do that with anything, you do it with qualifying, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this way, with the caveat, it's gonna maybe get tweaked a little bit, and well, also have to be ratified, I guess, by the yeah motorsport council. But the, the motorsport, one, once this makes it to the Motorsport Council, this is going to come through. Yeah, they just, yeah, they, they just sign it. Yeah, absolutely. So, let's go over what this all is and what, what it means for the teams and what it's going to mean for the entertainment. Now, again, this is one of those things that's a Bernie's idea to try to spice up the show, try to bring more TV audiences or whatever, make it, make it more fun for spectators even. Um, and one of the big things was that people said that on Saturday there was still not enough, not a lot going on. Yeah, like a lot of teams doing one lap. Like the Veta special used to be, he'd come out right at the end, do one shot after the track is nice and rubbered in and all yeah, that, and one shot to it. And because there's a immense a lot of like a lot of pressure to save tires, to uh, save engines. Because these engines have to be super reliable, they have to last for so, for so long. But there are many reasons why it makes sense for the teams to just stay out as long as they could, and then like do like one flying lap, one or two, and then try to try to try to make that your qualifying lap. But this is gonna change things. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, Quite it, a bit. Qualifying is still it's gonna be split still in three, three rounds. Yeah, it's yeah. still split in three parts with some with a break in between each. Uh, that's gonna be for TV viewing purposes for sure yeah. um, but this is how it starts still with the elimination yeah still 7-7 seven and seven knockouts right well last year was 6-6 six and six. we have a new team but this is because we have yeah because we have more players now so at the beginning of Q1 all the cars start all the cars go out on the, go, go out to to the track to try uh, to clock a fastest lap basically so, how it was this year yeah Basically, how it was this year? Everything it, it is as it was last year. The first seven minutes of yeah. Q1 is as it's been, right? You basically, yeah. yeah. Right at this point, with uh, the very first, uh, uh, like the, the, the first um, stint right now is going to be like, th there is going to be an incentive though, more than there used to be before, to go out and place a time. Yeah, because you, you can't you can't wait. You have to have a time done in the first seven minutes. Right. Because the slowest, or the car that has pro presumably no time, if you haven't yeah. set a time, by this point, you're eliminated. 
First card is eliminated. So here we go. Okay, so <laughs> let's say, so right now, you go, you, you are a car, you, you, you go into Q1, all the cars go into Q1. Up until it's for the first seven minutes, everything, like you, you're just trying to clock in a fast lap, and then, boom, one person goes out at the, at the seventh minute mark. Right. That's going to be the slowest person at that time. Right. Then, so let's say, in, you know, the way things are going right now, let's say this is Melbourne. That could be, that could very easily still be either a Sauber or a McLaren that goes out. Let's say, let's say Alonso goes out first. <laughs> at the seven minute mark then in one and a half minute intervals until the end of the 16 minutes right somebody's gonna go out so right here boom buttons out boom the two the two salvers <laughs> right <Okay. laughs> and then down here maybe possibly uh, Mr. Haas what, yeah one of the Haas with reliability issues the other one let's say and then uh, to round things up, one of the one of the Toros's, right? That's it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So these these cars are out here. Then they go for a little bit of a break. TV commercials sell you some gambling, fantasy sports. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, so, so. Whatever it is that they do in between, for sure. Vehicles, motor vehicles. Then it goes right in services. <laughs> then it goes right to Q2. Same situation, but then these 15 people that remain at the end of Q1 are battling it out again in the same way. The 15 minute round this time. This time the round ends at the 15 minute mark. At the 6 minute mark, boom, somebody goes out. Somebody's out. And then like that, again. every minute and a half. So that at the end of the 15 minutes, only 8 remain. Right. And these last 8 remain, remaining cars, um, they're, they're all going to go out, presumably, um, and will be given a chance to use that, the, 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 the softest tire that Pirelli is going to bring, right? Before, because the, pe the people that make Q3... We, yeah, we have to presume still a bunch about the tire. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in Q3, we will still have the one set that is reserved and must be used. Yeah, so, the so these are going to be, like, let, let's say to, one, uh, to, to a street, car, uh, street track, like Monaco or whatever, they bring that soup, that ultra soft, yeah, ultra soft that was 0.8 seconds <laughs> Which quicker. Great, yeah. yeah, it's it's gonna be huge, huge incentive. So now, but now, uh, what what they were saying before is that sometimes in Q3, because it was all or nothing, you could choose to either save that third set of tires, if and just park it in the garage and just wait, because if you knew that you had no chance to go to like the top step. Right? Right. Then um, then you would just park your car, you know, save the tires, save the engine. But now, since there's some so there's a serious chance that because of this elimination, you're actually like you you could rank higher just by virtue of staying out longer than, than your car like deserves to be. I think that's gonna be also an incentive <laughs> for that. Like that's yeah. The whole thing that we were talking about before could go completely out the window. People are going like that even the smaller teams that make it through Q three do have a serious encouragement to actually go out and, and you know and try to try to not be that guy or that guy. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It, from a TV standpoint, it makes sense that it's gonna work. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Bernie's I'm not, not. I'm not fully against it, right? Yeah, Bernie's not right about a, about a lot of things, but he when he's right, he's right sometimes. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like this could actually make it like. Th th this could work in terms of making it more exciting. At the same time, there's still all the strategies like fighting for like keeping yeah. a gap. Your your spacing between you and the guy in front, so you can go full out, not get blocked. You still need a window. Oh yeah, a qualifying window. But what, what what's gonna what's gonna happen is that at any given time of of these three uh, qualifying sessions, you're gonna see cars on the track. You're gonna see cars on the track if it's raining. You're gonna see cars on the track. You know what I mean? Like if it, yeah. yeah. One, I guess, small criticism. I forget who said it, but I read it already this afternoon. Of this is that not as much will change as some people might think because the tires on a full out lap are still only good for not much more than one lap. 
So you still are going to be using one set. It's, it's almost like a one shot still, but yeah. And I guess if you're a Mercedes, you can still like, let's say, go into Q1. If you, if you have a Mercedes and, and you know you, you know still, you, set a, you set your time. That's you're gonna yeah. you know you're gonna be in the top seven. Yeah, just park it. You can park it. Yeah. 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 You can go out, they can go out early, or you know, the 16 minutes is a big window. Mm-hmm. It's the same as it was, right? We were at 18, 15, and 12 last. Well, time. I mean, I guess they have they have to set up a time like at, around here, at least. So let's say the Mercedes goes like at the fifth minute, zoom, 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 does a good lap. That's it. That's all it needs to do. Park the car. Yeah. But that's. I guess that's that. That is as it's always been, pretty much. The top teams don't really bother much about Q1 unless something weird's going on. Yeah. Didn't hear anything really today about Bernie's reversed or reversed first half of the grid. I think that was that was never serious. Come on, that yeah. was that was just, that was one of those get things. some news, get some headlines, yeah, <laughs> get some headlines. Yeah, but this is something that I can see them actually implementing because it's not gonna mess up with any, like you know, like like we said, like any of the TV breaks. Like the TV breaks are still gonna be the same. But the like I said, I, this this past year we were, before we were at twenty fifteen and ten minute. Mm-hmm. Then they moved to 18, 15, and 12. Now we're at 16, 15, and 14. It's the same same amount of time. Yeah, it's still, still going to be an hour. Always, it's still going to, yeah, it's all always, together. It's the same, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I can see it working. Yeah, will it be more interesting? Probably, I'd say. I, 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 yeah, I can see it working at least to, to spice things up a little more. I, I see why not. This is, we've been talking about the past year that this is going to be a transition year absolutely and they also agreed today to add another month to the deadline to, to, to yeah. decide the 2017 rules Jesus these guys are <laughs> running out of time though they're not going to be able to do that for much longer keep keep postponing and postponing no this must be one of the last ones I mean it, it, yeah. I can it's it's Formula 1 so I can see it getting to next month and then being like yeah we're going to need another couple of weeks <laughs> still but <laughs> but this could be very well be the last extension to that yeah it's gotta it's gotta be mm-hmm. it's good. also interesting what Bernie was saying the other day he's like Formula 1 is a cartel he's like what we're doing is illegal this cartel is <laughs> illegal and that Vladimir Putin should be running the EU oh my god <laughs> he's like, no, no, he's no, like no, no. some of our teams have gone in front of the European Commission but I don't know there's also talk about uh Britain voting this summer about getting out of the EU, whether or not they're going to stay in. Yeah, the, yeah. the Brexit. Yeah. So maybe that's what he's banking on. Maybe. Yeah, he's, he, he, <laughs> he, he likes Cameron for that. He, 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 he said that. Yeah. He, he, said, he, he said something like, I can see like, what we, like we, he was talking about like British people. Well, we give to the EU, but I can't see what they give to us. Maybe he's so cocky about Britain leaving and him not having to deal with that EU commission stuff at all. <laughs> like, this is Britain, but, what are you talking about? But the sport's still, um, the FIA is based. The FIA is still based. Based, based in France. So, France. yeah, that will, like, that will be like, they'll still have a bit of a reach. You get into the back but who's to, who's to say, who's to say that Bernie isn't actually one of the proponents of the, or isn't encouraging in any way, um... For uh, for Cindy uh, and Sauber to go to the, to the EU for his own for his own nefarious purposes, you know what he said in that in that same interview? Really, he said something to the tune of, uh, um, "I don't get mad, I get even." Yeah, he, did. he <laughs> said, uh, he said uh, he's, he's had to take a few people out and show them show them like, some graves, <laughs> show them where the bodies are, or something like that. <laughs> fucking straight up gangster shit, man. <laughs> man, he's. <laughs> He's looking through the bottom of his bifocals. His hair, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the Bernie. Um, it's funny, man. He's, he, he's the, he thinks he still uh, has to. Like, his, 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 his way of thinking about F1 is, is really weird because he still thinks that he's the hero. He still thinks that he's, he's keeping it together. Um, yeah. Well, We'll see what happens with that. I mean, this is one thing that could work and they can probably implement. But I agree with uh, Martin Brundle with that, that tweet. Yeah, this is sort of like an idea that just sort of probably is going to weasel its way through the last minute. But 
F1 really needs a master plan. Yeah, it's not ambition. It's not, it's not visionary. It's not like thinking 10 years out. <clears throat> yeah. Not at all. No. no. This is abandoned. It's like, it's, it's, it's like a solution, like putting this tape here. <laughs> that's the painting thing. tape. Yeah. yeah, it's just painting tape. You know, <laughs> that's what that is. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm for this though. I'm like, excited about 2016 though in general. Like, yeah, we've from seen what I see. It's uh, testing yeah. yesterday and today, the little bits, a few like five second Vine clips <laughs> and stuff on the internet, and then uh, Ted's Ted's talks. Yeah, it looks looks like it's gonna be more competitive definitely than last year, for sure. One question on liveries. Yeah. What do you think about? I thought that you probably don't think much, but what do you think about that, that, that thing that Ferrari did with the white? On the, the white air, on the. Air? Uh, I don't know. That's. I don't know. It looks fine. It's uh, fine. To me, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I, 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 I haven't been a big fan. Like it's like I don't know when Ferrari puts a lot of white in their car. Sometimes doesn't look great, but at this, I don't know if if it does the same to you, but it kind of reminds me of. The Ferraris from the 70s, like Niki Lauda's car, it had that white thing. I don't know if it's hearkening to like classic liveries or not. Yeah, I guess some sort of throwback. Or, or maybe just to go, just to blend a little bit better with Mattel's helmet. Mattel's helmet. <laughs> I guess. It's the kind of helmet Kimmy has tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah that's right. I thought you were going to say something about like Haas. Oh, fuck Haas. It looks, yeah, it looks like a factory machine. The Toro Rosso, they said, I guess we that's were, not uh, their real... How long were we harping on about how cool would it be if they actually showed up with a bright yellow livery? Would it be amazing? Yeah, there was that that sort of uh, fantasy one from a few months ago that was gold and black. That was cool. Yeah. It was almost like an opposite of last year's Lotus. Yeah, it's blind, man. Yeah. I saw a side-by-side picture someone posted in the past few days, and it was like the mid-90s starting grid versus today. And it just looks like monotone today. There's yeah. Bright, there was a turquoise, Renault, and bright yellow. And like, a lot of fries always been red. But. A lot of, lot of black, a lot of uh, <clears throat> silver, yeah, a lot of uh, are... red accents. Yeah. I like manners, what they, they came up with. Yeah. It looks it, cool. Blue, yeah. blue and orange. That was pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, it works. That's going to be a, a cool card to see. It's the brightest one. Yeah. Renault's still promising. You're going to see a lot more yellow. When the season starts, it's a testing livery. They're just hiding the arrow. But hopefully, maybe they'll flip it. They might still show up with the yellow and black card. That's true. The black accent. That is that is the old yellow. school. Well, the old school. They sort of hinted at it a bit. The old school Renaults were. Uh, when Alonso was there, they were turquoise, right? Well, yeah, that, that was because of one still of the sponsors. I'm oh, talking right. about like like old school, old school Renaults um, were white and yellow. Oh, yeah. yellow, yellow and white. More more yellow and white. Yeah, more of like a solid yellow. Yeah. No, no, Toro, Toro Rosso too. They're, what was that? They don't really have their livery on. But they're, and they're saying they don't have a lot of it in their car. Yeah, but come on, like with the amount of stuff that they tested, that car had like that sneaky S duct right there by the nose. Yeah, like it, it had it, and like it had like that all that stuff going on in the back. I think like a lot of that car. They, they're probably saying that, but a lot of that car. Toro a lot Rosso. Of what we see, yeah, a lot of what we saw at least with the with the cool little aero bits here and there is gonna make it to their. B spec or whatever. It's, it's tight. It's yeah. tight at the back. Yeah. So if you look at a, pic, a lot of pictures of the cars, the top pictures, that size zero sort of <laughs> made its way from Honda. Oh, you know what else has the, 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 the that Toro Rosso? Yeah. yeah. It has that that like the the thing with the airbox that Mercedes did. Oh, split. Yeah. Yeah, like split in three ways. Though the the Mercedes one is like it's, it's pretty huge compared yeah, to all the other airboxes. Yeah. Like, but. Now they're, but they're saying that they're pretty pretty happy with it and that it's the reverting air to like all kinds of different places. Yeah, the middle is still sucking to the engine, but the outside is like cooling stuff and pulling air underneath the car, I guess. Brilliant. Let's yeah, see if it works. Yeah, let's see if it works. And the... Um, oh, I forgot. It slipped my mind. Sebastian yeah. Vettel, was though, fast. was faster by quite a bit, like over a second faster... He clocked the time over a second faster than Nico Rosberg's qualifying lap. Let's see. Well, These are today's... Nico Rosberg's qualifying lap from last year, man. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So this are, these are yesterday's times. Yes. Vettel was fastest. 
and uh, Hamilton second. Ricciardo was third. Bottas, Chellis, uh, Force India. They didn't even. I don't even think anyone talked to him. No, he was. Just, he's a reserve driver or development driver or something. Yeah, he got to drive the first day. Button sixth. Sainz, Ericsson, Verline in ninth. Haas in tenth with Grosjean and Palmer in in eleventh. But yeah, today one twenty two for Vettel. One twenty two point eight. Was, uh, oh, on this on the super soft though, was it wasn't there on the or no on the mediums. That's on the purple tire. Oh okay, no, that's the, the, that's ultra, the soft. ultra soft. Yeah. yeah. So, so they did a, a lot of laps today too, one hundred twenty five. Uh, but still, so they're now they're saying that 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 tire is point eight second faster. Even because even with the without the point eight, that's still a really fast tire. Like even even with the same tire as Ricciardo. Yeah, they said Ricardo's and Vettel's times, both on the ultra soft, were about 0.8 seconds below their their time on the, the next up tire, the, yeah. the super soft. But uh, R- Ricardo talking a bit of crap about his his engine says it feels pretty much the same as last year. <laughs> the tag hoist. The tag hoist. It's not the same engine though. <laughs> it's, it's not a Renault. It's a tag <laughs> Yeah, they don't even talk about it like like that. Like they, they apparently in interviews they refer to them as the power unit. The power supplier. unit, yeah. The, the power unit supplier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah the power unit supplier. Interesting though, Perez third place today. You know, th- these times don't mean everything. Mm-hmm. But he talked to uh, Ted there for a second, I think it was, and uh, he said, yeah, a lot of their cars the last years they don't have all the aero parts built this year, for this year yeah they're using some of last year still so there's a lot more to come from the car they were competitive at the end of the year for sure last year too the, the McLaren did I mean they're in better shape than this time around last year you can tell that as well no, but yeah, yeah. not looking particularly super quick they're not going to be in the podium anytime soon like this that quote they kept saying get saying Kept get saying said today, getting said, uh, Alonso's time, yeah. or uh, amount of laps he did today, more than all of testing last year in one day. Yeah. <laughs> Button two yesterday he did eighty eighty something laps. Still having some reliability issues, yeah. and even the Ferrari is having uh, uh, some reliability issues uh, with the way that you know. But it, oh, it has a red flag at the end of the day. Yeah. Like the engine failure, something like that. They put it up on a flatbed. But okay, we saw that though. Remember, like a, a few weeks ago or something, when we pulled out the pictures of the of the, the, the layout of the power units, uh, the Ferrari power units last year compared to this year. There's right. a bunch of shit that's been moved around, and and you know to to create uh, some weight advantages here and there. But like some of that, like I, it looked like a big change. Like it could have been a big change, and I guess it is in a certain way, probably. Nothing that they can't fix. Yeah, it seems like they they were they've been doing more uh, reliability testing. I guess since two seconds faster than Rosberg's fastest time, two full seconds, right? So Mercedes are going for distance. I guess Ferrari's push it, trying to push it hard. Yeah, and see where it, the top end of their power is and stuff. I guess. And this is gonna be seeing. this is gonna be the like this is the first Ferrari. This, that the new team led by um, uh, what's his name um, blanking out right now the new the new Ferrari technical uh, uh, oh, yeah. technical guy James Allison Allison yeah. yeah this is gonna be the first Ferrari that's gonna be fully made by his team or under his guidance or whatever and the, and 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 actually uh, under the mentorship of uh, Roy Byrne. The old school Ferrari the designer. So it's 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 a car that Ferrari like you can tell that they're really really proud of. They're really like they, they, they think it's gonna be fighting out there with Mercedes and and it's easy to see why. Like yeah yeah if it doesn't blow up right they did a lot more well a lot of laps mm-hmm. Mercedes did the most by far yeah. today. 172 laps. Well when you have the best the best car the, the best engine and the and the regulations are gonna stay somewhat the same uh, 
you got you got it you got it made like yeah they, they could focus There's a lot more time than a lot of other teams on like crazy aero stuff like what we saw yeah those the side <laughs> the barge board things they had yeah and there was uh, if you look at their nose, there's a black plastic piece that's underneath, and I saw some speculation today that that's removable for c- certain tracks to change oh, f- the characteristic of what? the underside of the car. That, that, <laughs> that might just be like a two inch separate curve that that piece comes out to change the the profile of the under nose. If you look at it, it looks removable because the bolts, if you. From this picture, I saw the bolts where the nose attaches to the, the car, this the Mercedes, mm-hmm. are high. They're above that piece. Obviously, Mike is sick. We don't have our PC connection today. We're not live. Can't show you any graphics or anything right now. Next week, though. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's, it's only been two days of testing anyways. Oh, yeah. The there's, very, there's still plenty of juicy testing drivers to drivers still go. haven't even touched the cars. Not so. at all. Right. Yeah. And still, we're making like we're, we have some healthy speculation already. Love it. Yes. <laughs> Verline ahead of McLaren, Manor. Oh man, but that's we know that could totally happen. Yeah, but somewhere around half the laps, though. You know, sixty percent of the laps. Manor Mercedes, humiliating Ron Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Bottas is with Williams, Haas, and Sauber, all kind of in the middle. His cruising days. Yeah. We can it, we can pretty much tell that that's gonna be you know that's gonna be the midfield still. Yeah. Yeah. Toro Rosso way way out back like four seconds back of Ferrari with that with the last year's engine. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although I can pretty much like guarantee you that this the the, the Ferrari engine inside the Sauber is probably not that great either. It might be a 2016 spec. But like Gene has said, like you know, it's not gonna be. <laughs> they, they asked they asked him if he was running the new Ferrari engine, and he said, "I don't know." <laughs> that was his full quote. He said, "I don't know." <laughs> he said, uh, "It's it would be understandable that Ferrari would be testing a bunch of different engines here today, but he said, I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> See, but something that a lot of people criticize, I think, with this year's rules is yeah. the. The manufacturer team has to be running the same spec engine as their customer teams, right? That's, yeah. That's what they're supposed to be, but... Under the guise of testing. Uh, that's, and that's hardware. The software does not have to be. Mm. Right? The mapping, the engine mapping. Yeah, all, all types of software yeah. and deployments of different things. So it's, it was interesting yesterday, Ted asked Red Bull... Um, What's his... Chris uh, Horner? No, no. Um, the Arrow guy. Oh, Adrian Newey? Ed Newey. What's wrong with you? He asked him about the uh, the engine noise and, you know, the engines are louder, right? Like, But it's it's only louder when there's a blow-off. Mm-hmm. And there's only blow-off when there's extra pressure. Yeah. And if you look at it, like, Mercedes were boasting last week that they're at like in somewhere 40% like the high 40s like over 50% yeah. somewhere around there efficient on that not wasting that heat right yeah so, so the only time he his quote was that the only time you're really going to notice it is on quality on a hot lap when the harvest is turned completely to zero mm. you have the ERSH turned right down to zero and they're not extracting any energy from the turbo so the extra boost won't be going to Harvesting the battery, you you go like one two laps warm up, charge the battery to the max, and then you do your qualifying lap and drain the battery down to zero before you cross the finish line, and you don't harvest any horsepower back, even in even in your deceleration, just don't bother with it. Yeah, you do that one lap. So there's still only that one shot lap, right? Yeah, but that's when you're really gonna notice the noise because that's the time when the wastegate blows the most. That one lap. It's going to be louder, maybe 12% louder. Uh, yeah, here today, uh, four decibels uh, was measured. I forget which engine, but one engine was measured. Somebody trackside did it for it, got four decibels different. Okay, which, but only like... Which is something like 12% or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's like three decibels is a 10%, something like that, isn't it? Uh, logarithmic somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Four <laughs> decibels, I forget which engine. It's not a lot louder, though. It's more distinct, I think. 
It's gonna like, be when, when when the wastegate is blowing, you're here. From the TV, <laughs> TV like so far, or the TV coverage, or, or like what what I've seen with the with Ted's notebook or whatever, it's been imperceptible. You can't tell. No, but they, uh, also they don't have the broadcast mic right. microphone set up and all yeah. that stuff, right? So we'll so I guess we'll see in qualifying. Let's, when this beast gets unleashed. <laughs> yeah, yeah moment. So, uh, three weeks, three and a half weeks or something. March 20th. March 20th, yeah. Or March something like that. Uh, March yeah. yeah. Uh, you will be sorely missed. Um, yeah. I, another thing that, that, came, that hit the headlines recently was some reshuffling uh, in our own Honda. Yes, big yeah. news overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What I saw that around 1 a.m. Eastern time. Before I went to bed, there was some rumors popping up on uh, Portuguese news. <laughs> well, that was that. Was, it was a long time coming, though. And, and yeah, you could, you could yeah. say that because since the whole airbags thing and like that mess that that, that the Honda has been in, I got a ridiculous down vote on Reddit a few weeks ago. For <laughs> saying, so I, somebody was talking about a rye, and I was like, I don't think he's allowed to talk to the media anymore. <laughs> a whole bunch of people downvoted me. It turns out I was right. <laughs> well. So the deal is that like apparently his relationships with McLaren towards the end were completely destroyed because yeah. they they basically like we we saw the press conference and it was awkward as fuck when Eric Bouillet, Bouillet was sitting here and then Arai was like sitting right beside him. And Sky, like, Sky cut back to that facial expression a whole bunch of times. He's sweating. sweating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously not used to pressure. First of all, yeah. And that's like, well, Bouillet, Bouillet is saying one thing, and like not even like you couldn't even look at the guy. <laughs> yeah. And then Arai saying some ridiculous shit, like "Oh, we're we're as fast as a Mercedes" or something. <laughs> 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 I forgot what he said, but he's like he he said some ridiculous stuff, like within you know in, in the press conferences. So it's interesting. Well, uh, I don't know what his original intentions were, but the way he's defended it recently is saying. You know, at that time, we had a lot of young engineers. We hired people, a lot of people straight from university, mm -hmm. from some top schools or stuff, and they didn't want help. Or they didn't want to poach engineers. Mm -hmm. They wanted to develop their own talent to, to make a Honda car that's a Honda made all by Honda, right? Yeah. But <clears throat> his defense more recently was that back then, last year, that he's just trying to encourage the team, right? Mm -hmm. you didn't, he can't say, like... We, uh, we know our engine sucks. We're never going to catch Mercedes and Ferrari this year, you know. <laughs> you had to say, like, no, we're going to win. So, I guess it kind of makes sense, but not really. <laughs> he wasn't doing him any favors either. Yeah, he does. Yeah. <laughs> he, he wasn't being honest yeah. <laughs> with himself or with his team or whatever. Face, not facing reality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it didn't work. It didn't but, work, and he's been replaced. Right. By not one, but three people, really. Yeah, sort of. Uh, in, in a way. And and, and the, the whole thing is so, some of the present, you know, even uh, Joe Sayward, journalist extraordinary, extraordinary, is like saying that uh, maybe this is going to mean that now they're going to be a bit more open to what the F1 community at large really wanted Honda to do, which was basically participate in, the, in this game where, like, these uh, only these people are, like, work in the F1 circles, get jobs like developing F1 engines and this like huge circle jerk that they have going on in Motorsport ba Valley in England. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, they basically want to, you know, participate in this higher, like, you know, keep, 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 keep that, sh that industry going there. And Honda was basically saying, no, we're going to, we're going to develop our own talent. We're going to have people in Japan working for this. Japan, we, don't yeah. know, we don't need no British help. Come on, get out of here. <laughs> uh, I think it's still, you know, in a way it's, I can uh, I can agree with that. It's, yeah. that's honorable. It's a totally different <coughs> country. It's their own corporation. <coughs> They're a huge ass company that makes some of the best cars. They, Absolutely, everybody. And, and they know. They know. Everybody's they been can. in a Civic. <coughs> the, the the whole thing was that people were saying that you know Honda they know how to make a V six hybrid. They they're, they're proven anyway uh, with the road cars at least. The three people that are gonna um, replace Ri. Or you know, in, in you know the many jobs, the many positions that I would have occupied in yeah. Honda. Now, Ra is not getting sacked completely. He's uh, moving to another R and D department. 
And uh, he's helping the transition? Yeah, yeah. But, but it's going to be a very brief transition. Uh, they, they really don't want him there, but they want him somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, <laughs> at, the, at the very, very top level, uh, it's going to be uh, Yoshi, Yoshiyuki Matsumoto. Now, Yoshi, Yoshiyuki Matsumoto is going to have the title of basically being um, the F1 operations director. Uh, on a director level. He, this, uh, this, uh, Mr. Matsumoto, he is a senior figure in, uh, um, in Honda. Now, previous to all this, he was, most recently, he, he oversaw the... Sorry, man. I was gonna say the the Indy stuff, right? No, 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 no. He's he's different. No, no, no. But he he oversaw Honda India. Close. India. 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 He he basically like make Honda what you know the position that it is right now in the Indian subcontinent. He basically he spends most of his time in between Japan, India, and Thailand, like the manufacturing facilities. He's a hands on. Uh, he's like he's like a CEO kind of guy. He's a chief operating officer. He's his deal is operations, very efficient guy. Uh, like you know factories, whatever. That's that's the kind of shit that he understands. And specifically, um, mo- most recently, he uh, he got made the new president of Honda's research and development department. Mm. Right. Now that so that's that's a guy at, at, at the very directive level, at the top level. The, it, 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 and I find this very interesting how Honda like went from like basically having one main contact guy as now like like splitting so that even somebody at, at, at a director level is gonna be he's gonna have some sort of an F one involvement. But anyway, that's that's that guy, uh, Mr. Matsumoto. Now, I think partly they realized the responsibility that I had was probably. Too much for one person. For one guy, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, it's too much for one guy. Because it, it wasn't because it wasn't on, only like F one that that RI was overseeing. It was other motorsport endeavors as well. So now this like the other motorsport guy, uh, the other motorsport stuff that's not necessarily F one, but could be F one related, but not necessarily F one, um, is going to be given to Kenji Otsu. And Kenji Otsu, uh, he is. It, it, he's still gonna be working very closely to, with with this other guy, um, but he is a chief engineer and general manager of gasoline engine technology. Oh. <laughs> he's big, he's another big one in R and D. So you, you see you see where you see where I'm getting with this. Now the main guy that's gonna be as far as hands on F one stuff, boots on the ground, the yeah. new R I as it were. Is gonna be uh, Yosuke Hasegano, 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 Hasegano. Anyway, oh ha- Hasegawa, Yosuke Hasegawa. Hasegawa. He is gonna be the new F1 guy. Um, he was like prior to this role, he was another senior engineer and general manager of electromotive technology. Wow. <laughs> and, 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 uh, so another R and D guy. One of these three guys was involved with. IndyCar up until now. Okay, well, as far as I know. Hasegawa, uh, Hasegawa, he was involved with the F1 project before. Like oh. Before they pulled out. In, 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 in some capacity. So, something that... <coughs> I don't follow Indy a lot, but mm. Honda was the only engine supplier for... For the longest time. For a, for a little while, and now Chevy also is there. Mm-hmm. And I think sort of showed them up a little <laughs> bit. So I think Honda's talked about they're going to be taking some of their... Indie guys and crossing them with their F1 guys to well, you, you, see tech, tech technologies both ways, I guess. You know what I see with this? I see a new direction that Honda are taking with their F1 and, and maybe motorsport in general. Uh, and it's definitely actually, instead of having it be a separate project on the side, they're going to do like a full integration, make it an actual part of the R and D department, the whole thing from the top to bottom. Yeah, right. from the top to bottom in terms of R and D. So, so whereas maybe before the uh, budget dollars or budget uh, yens were being allocated <laughs> from marketing, maybe now there's going to be some dollars some from R and D for research. sure. For and the road from the road car part. Absolutely, because they're, they're, they're bringing wanna, back the NSX now well, too, right? They're gonna, they're, they're gonna wanna the do the thing. So. They're gonna wanna do the thing that Mercedes is doing, right? Remember, we talked about, with that lady at the at the, at the auto show, 
Mercedes is treating it like a whole project, part, like in, fully integrated. That's a, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's why Mercedes really is ahead, because that's how they started. When yeah. they entered F1, they're like, all right, F1's bringing in hybrids. Mm -hmm. This is what we've been working on anyways with their blue tech stuff, and they were ahead of the game anyway. They integrated it. And now Honda, we just saw at the auto show Honda's coming back with the NSX, which is some sort of... It's not exactly like an F1 car, but it's a V6 turbo right. hybrid car. So it's all relevant. Yeah. Ho hopefully they can do well. Absolutely. I, you know, I, think, I think this this kind of mentality is what you... If you're a big car manufacturer, this is how you have to go into F1 now. This is what they talked about yeah. last year, really. <clears throat> Just Obviously, these things take time. <laughs> but it's what Arai said at the beginning. Honda is, is here for the long haul now. We're back in motorsport. We yeah. realized we were missing this. We're gonna be, we'll be here for 100 years or whatever they say. <laughs> the next 100 years. <laughs> Interestingly, some, something I said to you yeah. before we started. Uh, the, yesterday, I think it was uh, Boule, maybe, mm -hmm. was saying we're not going to be making any bold predictions like, like our right last year. <laughs> <laughs> he said we're going to be up on the podiums winning championships and stuff. <laughs> Alonso this afternoon said, <laughs> oh man <yeah. laughs> this possible McLaren has the best chassis hit in Formula 1 <laughs> <laughs> after one day <coughs> he drove the car around for like three oh, hours Alonso didn't get the memo <laughs> somebody somebody forgot to CC him <laughs> look at how long his hair is he's been, like, he's been chilling out <laughs> no, Alonso looks like he's been like hitting the bong hard <laughs> during the off season <laughs> Yeah, he's got, he's got a beard, black hair, the sunglasses. He's still, still standing like this. Yeah. Oh man! <laughs> oh, give those guys a good engine, though, Honda. Let's 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 see Alonso race again. That, Obviously, we can't pull up graphics again. I saved the picture <laughs> this afternoon. Somebody made a chart, mm -hmm. all the teams and their driver combined driver ages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see it? No. Look at look Wait, at is us. The, is it like the lowest Toro Rosso and then keep going up? Yeah, basically McLaren was just basically like doubled most of the rest of the teams. <laughs> Ferraris was actually fairly high. But... Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. This is the first year though for the new rules. No more seventeen year olds. Oh, yeah. Fully in effect this year, the super license rules. Well, if, if they were in effect before, uh, Pascal Barlein wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to, to get into F1. He just turned 18? Just? <laughs> no, but uh, f uh, from, from other. Uh, you know, the only oh, that mess with the points. He his points. Yeah, well, he, he, he um, came from experience. DCM. Right, yeah. Right? So he didn't have, like, he wouldn't have had enough of single seater experience, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we'll see how he does. I think he's. I think he's gonna do a pretty good job. I think he's gonna show Rariento what's good. <laughs> yeah, he, se he seems like that. Yeah. Yeah. Rariento seems like probably. He's not ready. For I don't know. I s <clears throat> yesterday I had I had Sky on and uh, they showed one of his GP2 races. Yeah. But I met, like I went like it started and then I went to the grocery store and I came back and it was still on. But I don't know. He was still in the, like. Fourth or fifth place, I don't know. He's, in, he's probably too nice of a guy on track too. He's he's apparently just not spectacular, but I mean, there's still like some people that aren't spectacular and then make it to F1 and you know something clicks and, and they become good drivers. I don't think this guy's gonna surprise us like that like that though. <laughs> no, no. I mean, Verline seems like it's more like natural talent. Yeah, natural talent and real experience. Yeah. Mm. More of the attitude. Yeah. You well, see it in his eyes. He was a champion with DTM. DTM is more popular in Germany than F1. Yeah, it's... Yeah. yeah. I watched one race just <clears throat> when I first heard about it. But yeah, the, cr the crowds are full. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a... Like a almost like a football-type atmosphere in America, I guess. Like, a, yeah. just people <coughs> <coughs> drink pounded beers and stuff and camping out and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it seems cool. I want to talk about this closed cockpit thing too. Oh yeah, yeah. Before yeah. we finish, yeah, because it seems like it is gonna happen. Okay. But then there's been like sort of public fight almost between some of the drivers. Like um, Hulkenberg made some statements yesterday in the news. I think it was yesterday. He really thinks it's the wrong direction. Doesn't like it. 
it's meant to be dangerous, everybody knows it's dangerous, yeah. right? I think I can agree with that. I think closed cockpits are a bit of a silly solution for what the real problem is. I guess. There's the halo, and then Red Bull wants to present, like, a canopied halo. Also, like, a halo with a glass. But then, at the, at the, other, the other end, there's drivers in the middle. A bunch have made comments, but Ricciardo was saying, you know, it's kind of silly to leave it open as a bit of tradition when we could easily close it. Nobody has that... I forget his name, and Indy died, and Bianchi died. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs to die, just, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, he, his quote was something like, uh, I don't think it takes away from the bravery at all, and you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of silly not to do it. So I don't know, when you... <laughs> Maybe he's, he's when you put it, say it raw like that, it's hard to see which side you're on, really, I don't know. Yeah. When you look at, just by their faces, though, like, Daniel Ricciardo and Hockenberg, <laughs> <laughs> they look like, like, Hockenberg would, like, be ready to throw down and party hard, like, for, like, you know what I mean, like, stay out, live outside yeah. for a few days type of thing. He's, uh, he's, got, he's got that uh, live fast and die young, die young thing going on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not giving a fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whereas Ricardo's a bit different. Probably. I, th I think Ricci Ricardo is looking at a, at, a, at a very long career ahead of him and, you know, eventually retiring, like, like doing the Australian commentary or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, we didn't get to show last, well, we don't have uh, graphics today, but I think he's kind of taken cue from, like, Hamilton style a bit more, like, be, you can be up there. Yeah. He was on stage with some heavy metal band last week, you see that? <laughs> Doing stuff like that, more, like, fashion type things and whatever, watch commercials and stuff like that. <laughs> Promoting the yeah. brand. Yeah, Hockenberg's not doing any of that shit. No. Yeah. He's not even flashing his platinum uh, FIA license. <laughs> right, he's got the platinum license. Yeah. <laughs> the one with Lamar. Cool. Alright, I guess... Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. We don't have Mike to play us out, so I guess... Uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, follow us uh, if you like. Uh, we usually do a more of a long format show uh, to our listeners. Uh, we'll be back hopefully with uh, with a lot more uh, reliability next week and um, with more news uh, from testing of the Formula One 2016 season. Oh yeah.